Oh my gosh. We're excited. Oh, you look good. I haven't seen you in forever. Hi, friend. I know. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Oh my gosh, thank you. It's such an honor to have you here tonight. And I know you have a time limit. So we're going to ju <laughs> jump right into it and get all of our juices from you on tonight. They are lighted up. They are so excited that you are here today. And gosh, we just appreciate your time um and we know this is about to be good okay so we are prepared including myself to take my notes on tonight so we're gonna jump in so for those of you guys who don't know this is mrs kelly brown Woo! she's gonna share all the juice with us tonight um so i want you to kind of start with um so one of the biggest things that i i love to share is that it's all about your mind like it's the work but it's really about your mind to be able to do the work you know what i'm saying but i would love for you to share with us who was kelly before she came before it works came into her life who was that so <clears throat> right before i just had these really spicy tacos y'all in there getting my nose i'm like runny nose okay um right before this business um, my husband and i were in full-time ministry and we were living paycheck to paycheck and my daughter Nova wa wanted to take ballet classes and we should have the money. Like we didn't have money for anything extra. It was like what we need, we can take care of or charge it on the credit card. <laughs> and beyond that, there just wasn't, there's no date nights. There's no fun stuff. You want to do something fun? The answer is no. <laughs> and that's just not a way to live. Like I like to do fun things. I'm not that fancy, but for Pete's sake, you know what I'm saying? I want to go buy new clothes instead of always buying used clothes. Like, you know, it's not that it matters, but you get what I mean. So, um, right before this, that's, that's where we were at. My husband, we had just moved from Nevada to Texas. We didn't know anybody. We were out like in the middle of nowhere. Um, and my husband took a job that was full-time and then I was going to work part-time and I just had a baby. One was five weeks old and the other was two. And then I started this business. And I was like, what was I thinking? Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so then here we are. Yeah. Well, what made you say, well, I guess introduce yourself because they don't know. I know. <laughs> I guess if you could just take a moment just to introduce yourself and then I'll get into the next question. Sure. So my name is Kelly Brown. Hi. I'm excited to be with y'all. It's such an honor. I'm so thankful you asked me, friend. I just, I love you guys. I love your team. Um, and uh, I've been doing this for six years. And when I started, I didn't know people made money at things like this. I honestly thought most people lost money doing stuff like this. And I was like, girl, I don't got an extra hundred dollars to throw in the trash can. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So I said, no, the first couple of times, um, my friend Stacy asked me, um, but here we are six years later and my husband is home full time. We have three now three tiny sisters, tiny little girls, um, and we're able to give more than we used to make in a year. You know what I mean? And we're able to do, and I'm like, Lord, ask me, I will do whatever you want me to do. You know what I mean? I grew up poor. So for me, I'm, I'm easily satisfied by having a house. <laughs> Like, doesn't even have to be a bomb house. It could just be a nice house. You know what I mean? Like a regular house, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, but this has just blessed us in such an incredible way um, that I just never, ever expected. That's so cool. So let's talk about this. This wasn't even in my questions, but let's talk about this growing up poor. What does that mean? So my dad was extremely physically abusive to both me and my mom. I'm an only child. And I mean, like he stabbed her and missed her heart by a half an inch with the kitchen knife. Like he beat the tar out of us. And so um, we, one day I was in kindergarten, my mom shows up with a car full of stuff and we were off to the police station and they go and take us into hiding. And we were in hiding for two and a half years at a women and children's shelter till a Jamaican couple, Nick and Bernie, adopted us out and helped us reacclimate to regular life. And then I end up in a trailer park in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma, you know what I mean? And we lived a really scary life until I was about, I guess in high school is when it kind of calmed down, but we lived a really scary life on the run, you know, and we were poor. We, I, we, my mom, the rent was two fifty a month. My mom made $8 and 50 cents an hour. And that was what we had. You know, so we became a part of a church in Oklahoma that like adopted us as like a 
family they took care of and brought me clothes and shoes and you know, money to pay our rent and our utility bill. So as a kid, I grew up, I never felt safe and we never had enough ever. And so my hope was someday I might get married. I don't even know what being a wife is like or a mom, because I'm an only child, you know what I mean? And I'm like, someday maybe I'll make $12 an hour and we'll have a real house instead of our old jacked up trailer. It was so jacked up and old, but it's fine. You know what I mean? So just a poor mindset in general, there was never enough. And I never expected more than to just be okay was my hope. Wow. So let's, okay, come on, Holy Ghost, come on. So let's talk about being there, starting the business. So when I started, I was like thinking, I don't know if I could find a way to make 55 bucks a month to pay for ballet. And it was like consistent $55, I'd work for it. Because before this business, I would buy my girls clothes and shoes on mom swap shops. Y'all know what those are, like where you can buy and sell and trade stuff with other moms. So that's how like I clothed my girls. I'm very thrifty. <laughs> so I'm like, and I kind of like deals, right? So I'm like, girl, we don't need to go to Target and pay $24 for toddler shoes when I can get them brand new with no scuffs on it. I'll just get the good stuff, but get it used on Facebook. I'm telling you, I still do it now. I'm not scared. Okay. But, but I was thinking, you know, if this will give me 55 bucks a month for ballet consistently, I'll work for that. I was willing to work for it. I'll do the work for it. I don't know what the work looks like, but I'll do it, you know? And then I started thinking, what if you know, I could make enough that we could buy new clothes and shoes at the store. You know what I mean? If this business would provide in that way. And then I started thinking, I don't know, well, we kind of needed a new family car. Nothing fancy. My husband picked a minivan. You know what I mean? <laughs> he made me get a minivan. Sorry if y'all are minivan moms, but I'm just saying, <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So eventually, I mean, I was real baby stepping my mindset, baby step, baby step, baby step, baby step. And as I kept going forward, my brain cell for the business grew. Yeah. How, let's talk about the leaps and bounds, though. Like, how do you go from just wanting to pay for ballet to, okay, wait, I can be an ambassador. Like, this is, let me take these limits off. So I didn't believe I could be an ambassador till after I went ambassador. Wow. I was scared to death. But I was more scared of being poor this is just hopefully nobody don't be offended by my words. Okay. This is just my feelings. Okay. So please don't. Love it. So I was more afraid of being poor than afraid of, I, I couldn't think about ambassador, but I'm so terrified of my girls growing up the way I grew up. We just, we had nothing like if the Lord hadn't provided. And I mean, legit every step of the way provided for us, I would have had nothing. I would have nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so my business was, we decided to bring my husband home because we had a surprise tiny third sister. Surprise, I'm 35 or 36 having a baby. Yay! You know what I mean? I'm like, woohoo! So, um, but I was like, I'm drowning. He was working 60 something hours a week at church, 60, 70 hours a week, like no weekends, no holidays off. You know how, that's how church yeah. kind of goes you know what I mean and then but then I have these three tiny girls and I'm trying to work this business and I'm like drowning I'm drowning I'm not happy but I know we're not supposed to quit the business so we prayed about it and he quit his job and my business was not doing awesome but it was like my mom always said pooper get off the pot like you either get the job done or get out of the way somebody else is going to do it you know what I mean and I was terrified uh, that my family would go backwards. I, I just don't, I wanted my girls to just have a house. I want them to feel safe. I don't want them to. I was always worried about the bills. I was always worried about how are we going to buy food? You know what I'm, And I was a kid. That's not the way kids aren't supposed to do those things. It, at least I don't think, yeah. you know, I don't know. At least I didn't think so. So anyways, I was more afraid of that than anything else, but I didn't believe I could do it till after it happened. I was terrified. But I was like, I, I can't think about going ambassador. I just have to do the next right thing in front of me. And I can't worry about, I'm going to go for this thing. I don't know if it's going to work. 
I don't necessarily believe I can do it, but I know that I can't go back. I can't go backwards. My, I can't let my family go to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, honestly, out of fear. So good. So you just did the next right thing in front of you. I love that. That is so good. I had somebody who asked, did you struggle with not feeling worthy of, su of success? And if so, how'd you work through that? So I really like that question. Growing up, I was taught success was a bad thing. Mm. At, at, you know, church, I was in the Bible belt, right? So like, I mean, I was going to church four times a week and I loved it. I was, I'm like, anytime the church doors are open, Kelly Brown's there. And it's not even for kids. It's like prayer meeting with the old ladies. I'm like, I'm coming. You know what I mean? I'm like, I sign me up. I'm at church. I'm at church. I'm at church because I had nothing but Jesus. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I have nothing. I had nothing but Jesus. So when it comes to success and money, I've had to grow because I was taught those things were wrong. Like to want more than you need is you're being materialistic or you're being, you're chasing money or the worldly things and you're supposed to store up treasures in heaven. Okay. And, and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, the Bible doesn't say that money is the root of evil. It says for the love of money is the root of all evil. And I don't love, in fact, I hated money. I, I don't even want to talk about money because I hate it so much because of the pain point of, you know, how I grew up, you know what I mean? So it wasn't a worthiness issue. It was, I had trouble wanting it mm. and I didn't know how to get over it. So I basically stopped thinking about it. It's good. You know, when they say you're not supposed to stuff your feelings, don't stuff your feelings. You need to talk about them. I'm like, nah, girl, I stuffed them. I stuffed them real deep. Cause I'm like, I can't answer my own questions. I just know the Lord brought me here and he's given me this opportunity and I don't have any answers, but I have to just trust that I'm doing the right thing. And I just go. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? And so for me, the switch over point is, was reading secrets of the millionaire mind. I almost didn't buy the book because it said millionaire on it. Yep. I mean, I'm like that against, like, I don't know how to feel still. I'm like still trying to go, Lord, teach me how to want it. Cause I don't, I don't know how to want it on my own. That's good. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, of course we need money. That's not bad. You know what I'm saying? But it's the way I was taught and, and the way I was brought up, you know what I mean? My experiences told me you're never going to have it. So don't want it. Mm. You're not supposed to have it. So don't want it, but we can't give, we don't have, Come on. you know what I mean? So that book really showed me, wow, I'm pretty jacked up. <laughs> I mean, I know it's jacked up, but you know what I mean? Reading that book, I was like, wow, yes, I'm a jacked up ambassador. <laughs> and now I'm a jacked up triple 2.0 and I'll be a jacked up double ambassador. That's fine. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> that is so good. Okay, so that's so good. It's actually our leadership just finished that book because it was it was a book that changed my whole life. Like it just changed everything for me. It was like, man, I've been doing this all wrong on so many different levels and I never knew anything different. Like how I don't know. It was so good. So such a good book. Such a good book. All right. So all right, let's talk about the business. Well, let's start with walking me through your it works journey so it's been six years so you got a lot of life when it comes to the business because a lot can happen in six years can you share at least i don't know because i know you can think of more than three but three times you had to pivot in order to be successful uh, well um here what i will say is if you're not a pivoter you're gonna learn real fast <laughs> and my uh stacy is mine roller stacy i'll call it she always used to say say blessed are the flexible for they'll never be bent out of shape mm -hmm. i i love that blessed are the flexible for they'll never be bent out of shape because if you ain't flexible you're gonna learn real quick if you want to win you've got to stay flexible um so yeah there's a few times uh well, initially when I got started, I didn't post on social media. I was terrified. 
look at me. I'm like, you're going to hear me say this over and over and over again. I'm like, my biggest obstacle has been fear in this whole process. I was terrified to even try, terrified to post. So <clears throat> when I started, they were like, put up this wrap before and after of naked bellies on your social media. I'm like, oh, very good. All my pastor friends should come and see all the naked body parts on my social. Good, good idea. You know, people in their underwear. Good, good idea. You know, whatever. So um, I started there, but then I, I panicked and I was like, no, if I want to go hard and I want to do, make this be something and I switched lanes, y'all don't do this. Don't do what I did. I went straight to Instagram, started a brand new Instagram account and just exploded it. I mean, I was like friending all day and all night, 24 hours a day friend requesting when you can do it as much as you want to. And so I pivoted in the beginning straight to Instagram and built with Instagram to triple diamond with all strangers, no people I knew because I was so scared. What a dumb idiot. Anyway, so I went straight to triple diamond. That was like, it took me a little over a year to go triple. Um, and then when triple happened, we had a lot of life. It was when Mark got cancer. And at that same time, so much happened on my team. One of my main leaders, she got cancer. Then we had people having deaths in their family, like a lot, every single leg head, like not just my top leg heads, like the leaders under them and the leaders under them, every single person. It was like, we were praying over our team like crazy because every day somebody would call, you're never going to believe this. And it started becoming kind of like 2020 where you're like, dude, what else is going to happen? And we were like, you're never going to believe this. You're never going to, be- I can't believe it. Death, cancer, uh, marriage is falling apart. Uh, miscarriages. Like wow. I'm like, if any more, fa- if any more life happens, I swear I, this is like juju, bad juju bees. <laughs> I'm like, get, <laughs> and then I got pregnant mm. while pregnancy, please hear my heart. Okay. While pregnancy is, it's awesome. It's a blessing. Babies are a blessing. And I agree with you, but I was not on that path. I was done. We had decided and gotten, you know I mean? So that kind of threw me for a loop because I really didn't want to have any more kids. I didn't want to go through birth. Honestly, I'm terrified of birth. There's the answer. I'm like a giant chicken. So anyways, <clears throat> so we went through a hard time and And so a year goes by and we brought Andrew home, moved from Texas back to Nevada to be near family. This is where his family is. And I had to pivot again. And that's where my business had fallen down to double and his account was a diamond lifetime rank, but it had gone down to executive. And I was deciding I'm going ambassador and I don't know what it's going to take from me, but we're both on the same wavelength, we're going to do whatever it possibly takes and just die or die trying. Like we're all dying eventually, right? So I'm either dying or I'm dying trying. One way or the other, I am going forward. <laughs> and that was that was the biggest turning point in my business. Yeah, I got somebody who asked, um, how did you push through and recover emotionally? Uh, you mean after that, that oh, year, yeah, it seems like, yeah, well, I, I, it was the first time I sincerely was going, Lord, am I really not in the right place? Did I like get off track? Did I miss hear you? Did I like, it was really bad for all my people, you know what I mean? Um, and so it, it was it was hard. Um, but we brought Andrew home and this was our only income and we're a family of five and my paycheck could only cover our mortgage and our, you, and our, uh, what do you call tithe? Mm-hmm. And, and with, there was nothing left over for utilities and groceries. So good thing we had savings, right? So there was nothing left over. And I was like, it was fear. Fear made me get over the way I feel and do the job. I was terrified. If I don't do something about this, I'm going to lose what I have, Mm. you know, not even like lose. I mean, I'm going to lose, I'm not at my old rank and I'm going to lose what I have. If I don't do something about it, if I don't decide to change this and I don't know how I never not worked my business ever. 
I never not worked it, but I didn't know what, I never understood what deciding meant. It never clicked. I was like, somebody explain deciding. I'm so tired of hearing everyone say, I decided. I'm like, oh, very good. I've decided like 20 times. And do you see my E-suite? It's still in the same place. (laughs) (laughs) So it was fear is how I got past it. I, I don't know. I don't know. It was not like a get over. It was like, you better get your pan- big panties what, on. What made you make it your only option? Because I'm going to be just in complete transparency. Um, mm, most of our community will revert back. So they turn around and they say, I don't care. I'm just going to go back to what I know. It's like, I always explain like this. It's like a drug dealer who gets out of jail. It's like, I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. I got a job. And then the first thing that goes wrong, it's like, man, this is easier to just go back and sell drugs. See what I'm saying? It, that's kind of the mentality that we struggle with a lot of times. So what made you decide to move forward instead of going backwards? So I like that you're asking that question. I don't feel like anybody's ever asked that before. I think that's a great question. It happens on everyone's team's all the time. Um, and for us, <clears throat> I do have um, a degree, but like I went online and it's a ministry degree. So you don't do ministry to make money. Okay. So I, we can either, we can very easily go get a job at a church somewhere. Okay. But I don't want to go back to paycheck to paycheck. It was like, Rob Peter to pay Paul. We paid the bills with the credit card and pay the credit card off each month. And Hopefully you can pay the whole bill off, but not always. And I'm like, we could go back to that. Andrew had a different job before that working here in Las Vegas downtown. And the job was a good job, but he had to work 60 something hours for us to be above paycheck to paycheck. So I'm like, sure, we could go back and get a job, but we're never going to get ahead if I go back to a nine to five. Nobody now is ever going to pay me what I get paid now with this business. I can't just go get a regular job. I'm not going to be satisfied. You know what I'm saying? And so while going back is a guaranteed paycheck, but what about your future? What about five years from now? What about 10 years from now? You're still going to be stress and struggle paycheck to paycheck. I want to grow. I want to make legacy income. I want, I want a paycheck that I can give the, when the Lord asks me to give, I can save for my girls. And I want to make enough I can say for my grandkids too. And as we go on in life, I want the, I want the Lord to ask us to do big things. We want to own um, rental properties that we can provide for single moms, like my mom. The only option we had was the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? But what if I could help single moms live in a nicer place? And, and maybe it's not going to be fancy, but I mean, I'll make it nice. I won't let somebody live in a dump. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be the taker anymore. I don't want to be on the receiving end. I had to receive my whole life. I, if, I, if we didn't receive, we couldn't pay the bills. I want to be the one that pays the bills for people. And a nine to five isn't going to do that for me. It's not. And it is for anybody that decides they want a different life. But you might have to sacrifice in the beginning. I had to sacrifice. I was up at 4.30 in the morning, every single morning. Two hours of work for my family woke up. I was working during lunchtime. I was working after work. I was working during nap times. I was working after bedtime because I refuse to live like this forever. Saying no all the time to the things you want is not fun. And you don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept. I work hard. Y'all, I had a job at Starbucks for two and a half years and I killed that job. They should have been paying me way more. I did my job your job, their job, and everybody else's job. Everybody knows my name in that store because I like it. I like working hard. You cannot pay me enough for the work that I will do. Does that, I will work hard. Whatever job you give me, I will always go above and beyond, but nobody is going to respect my effort like I will respect my effort, like this business will respect my effort. And you are not excluded from whatever life you want, but you will have to choose because nobody can choose it for you. And you might have to get up earlier and you might have to stay up later, but Joel, this is what I have to tell all of my team. Okay. All the time I say these things and I will keep going on social media and I will look for whoever is willing to do what I am willing to do. I am willing to outwork anybody. 
because I believe this is what God asked me to, he brought me here to this opportunity. And he didn't give you this to be stress and struggle on top of your shoulders. This is not like a, let me point out how unworthy you are and give you this offer. Like, what is this? What is this? This business is not like shame on you or like boo on, that is not what this is for. It's not to show you what you can, what you're not worthy of or what you're not capable of, but it does shine a light on the unhealthy areas in your life. And if you let the Lord shine that light on those areas and deal with them, you can grow. You can grow. And you know what? At the end of the day, if, if, if it came down to it, I would give all of the income back if I can keep who I've become and the way that I think because of this business. Now I tell my girls, they're nine, six, and three. And as we talk and they talk about their kid ideas of what they want to be when they grow up. And sometimes, you know, my daughter knows this, she'll say, I think I want to be a nurse someday. I'm like, I would love that. You're great at taking care of people. But what if you could be the boss of the nurses? Or what if you could um, go on a mission, you know, trip to another country? And what if you could take care of the sick? What if you, I'm, I'm talking to them and I go, hey, don't just think about what everybody else is doing. Let's think a step bigger. How can you impact a world around you? Do you know what I'm saying? And this business makes me think that way. But you are going to have to decide, come hell or high water die or die trying. I will do what it takes so that my family lives a different life than I did. I will do what it takes. So good. Just need a moment of silence. Like, oh, and that's all Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> I'm going to have to say, have you seen that video? I was, I was in uh -uh. I was in I said to you after this. <laughs> It's a TikTok. I just need to stay off of there. Oh, um, you know what? Half of our conversations end in TikTok jokes. Yes, that's it. That's, yep, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo, that, that was that was just enough to pass an offering plate, okay? <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so what's your favorite way? I would hate to even switch gears like this, but we're going to switch them. What's your favorite way to get a newbie going? Okay, so um, we do use units um, and we have, here's the thing. I, I, I could totally be wrong on this, so, but I'll just tell you what I do. Okay, so we have units and I mean, I feel like friend, we have done everything under the sun. I mean, me and Stacy made these 30 days of videos and each video is like three minutes long. And you could either watch each three minute video and it's going to explain everything you need to know to build business, you know, but then nobody used them. And I'm like, man, that was like as simple as we could make it. And you didn't use them. Okay. And then, and we use units and we've tried a newbie to Ruby page, but people didn't want to go to another page, you know? Um, so right now what I'm finding that's working for me, that is helping is units and we have you know and i could even show you or explain to you but we have just you know a little 10-step doodad that's going to explain some of the basics but at the end of the day if you want people to work it's one-on-one -on -one conversation yeah, that's good it is and i you know what you're going to get real frustrated with it because i do too i mean so if i put up this giveaway post am i giving that money or is that coming from somewhere i'm like did you even look did you even did you, read look it? did you even try you didn't try you didn't even read that no it is not coming from you it is a team giveaway yes. glory Brittany. i don't pay for i don't pray for patience because i don't need the lord to mess with it i'm like no nope, right. don't add any more no uh -uh. you know what i mean it's fine it's fine people are busy what I do find is that they're not ready to listen until they're ready to listen. So you have to just keep repeating until it's their time to go, okay, now I want you to explain to me. I think I'm ready to try. Oh, good. Because I already said it to you five times, but that's fine. Let me say it again. <laughs> and you got to have some grace yes. in this because let me tell you,
Stacy has told me things before and I did not listen for six months. She said, I think we should try this thing. It's called host to post. And I was like, I'm, like, I'm fine over here on Instagram. <laughs> and it took her six months of saying it. Finally, I was like, okay, I think I want to try it. She's like, oh, now you want to try. It's how people are. It's just people. And you can't change it. You know what I mean? So we do have like, you know, units that kind of explains it if they use the unit, but if they don't, I can refer it. You know what I mean? So like today I'm, I'm talking to going down my list of people. I, I have a physical list of people, so I don't forget them. Okay. I write everyone's I'm blue and yellow. Okay. So I'm not going to remember everything. I'm not great with information. It's fine. Um, but I'm going down the list. And I'm like, okay, how are you doing? Where are you at? Let's talk about what you're at, what process, what step are you at in the process, whatever. And they're like, okay, I think I need to try host to post. Okay. Have you looked at the units and go to unit one? Um, so I go take a screenshot and circle it with big red. Not, not that many times. I only circled it once, but you'll know that's what I was feeling. I was feeling this, but I only circled it one time. <laughs> this was my, you know, and I sent it with pink hearts and I'm like, okay, no problem. You're just going to go right here <laughs> it's gonna walk you through Here's people apologizing to their enrollers right now i know it's okay y'all it's okay it just is how it is and you're not it's until you're ready to hear you're not ready that's true you know what i mean <clears throat> that is that is so funny but that's good we we use units as well and we've we actually just had the conversation like what can we do i don't even know i'm, I'm i don't even know what else we can do like what I don't even know, like everything, everything. It's right there. It's like, how do I get my shopping free? It's, uh, I don't, I don't even know, like to, I don't know, flash. No, I know. And you know, we got this, this new one. We've been uni using units for a few years. Mm -hmm. We got a whole new one this year. Thinking uh, maybe this is it. It's what Amanda Busher uses. So we're like, okay, show me what you're using. It's another, it's a unit. <laughs> but when you talk one-on-one -on -one to people, let me tell you, can I tell you something that I helped my leaders today? Okay, so I find that the way that I get these promotions done is communicating in message groups, yes. Go live, sure. But you have to get one-on-one, -on -one. your money is in one-on-one -on -one conversation. Meeting somebody exactly where they are. Okay, Rachel, tell me where you're at. In the, have you tried doing how to post yet? Oh, you don't know what it is? Okay, let me show you. Here's what I want you to do. Put this up. And then the next thing you're going to do is as if me and Rachel are taking on the world. Hmm. Right? Okay. And then what happens is nobody reaches back out to them because you're like, I told them what to do. Why aren't they doing it? Y'all ever felt that way before? So <clears throat> for reaching back out, I reach out every day, if not every other day, until they're coming to me on a regular basis, I'm going to them. Encourage, give vision and action steps. Encourage, vision, action steps. Okay, Rachel, I'm so excited. I know I sent you your chart yesterday, so we know your overall goal is going Ruby, but ultimately we wanna be getting this, these bonuses, right? So, okay, I 1000% believe you can do this. You're going to start with host of post for the next six days, Rachel, you need to think of three people, one, two, three, and I show them a Ruby chart and this, this is what we're focused on. And then we're going to worry about the bonuses in a minute. But first of all, one, two, three distributors, think of three people for $39 in the next six days. And then I want you to start host to post as well. Okay. And so I'm giving them action steps, three DTs. I want you to work on at least five to 10 host to posts up five days out of the week at uh, five days out of these next six days is going to be your goal, but you can do, I'm going to show you exactly what to do. And I will be right here. When you have questions, you're just going to come right back to me. So it's like, but I'm doing that with a list of people. Does that make sense? It's me and them against the world, but I'm focused specifically only on their business. Every time I talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. And then what you told them yesterday expired. Mm. So that's the biggest thing I tell, I'm telling my team is what you said yesterday, it's already expired because they go to sleep. You're like pumped up, ready to go. They go to sleep and they wake up the next day and they go, oh shoot, <laughs> is this going to work for me? I don't know if I can do, I don't know that I can, I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm like, well, you wasn't overwhelmed yesterday when we talked. Okay. Let me do again. Okay. Let's go again. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So 
one on one ultimately is the biggest thing. That's so good. That's good. And it's true. I know you, that's true for me too. Okay. How do you start and end your day? Oh, start my day right now. Here's what I'm doing Women at the Well with Cami, and they're going through the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. So I got this very ugly Bible. <laughs> like at some point I need a new Bible. It's totally broken, but it's fine. It, I don't, it's, you know, I have it. And then Jesus calling is my favorite devotional and then journaling. Nice. Okay. Uh, it takes me like a good solid hour. So I'm up at four 30 in the morning and I'm, it's at least an hour, if not an hour and a half, because I need Jesus in a major way. Okay, How do I end my day? Um, well, in my time zone, it's just right now after dinner time. So it's 541 at my house. So we've just had dinner. I usually have Zooms, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for sure, in the evening time till about seven o'clock. Um, and then I go back to being mom, helping everybody brush teeth, wipe butts, get ready for bed, jammies, whatever. And then um, at eight o'clock, my girls go to bed and then my phone actually goes to sleep at 9 p.m. And so after 9 p.m., I'm no longer available. And I don't really have a ton of hard lines, but I have to make that a hard line for me. My phone doesn't turn on. I don't answer people really. I try not to until 6.30, but <laughs> sometime between 5.30, after 5.30, I start to accidentally answer people in the morning time. Um, but 9 PM, my phone goes to sleep. And then I'm visiting with Andrew. He usually likes to watch a show or something, but that's, you know what I mean? I, I visit with him. I try to watch a show with him if I can stay awake. And then I go to sleep. Yay, I love it. Come on, boundaries. Put the phone away. Ugh. Yeah, my girls go to bed at eight. My phone goes to sleep at nine. So between eight and nine, we can sometimes squeeze in a Netflix show if I can stay awake and I try. Ooh, Nine o'clock, I'm out. That's good. I like that. Just turn it off instead of hitting do not disturb. Just turn it off completely. Do you have a house phone? House phone? Yeah. Nope. I love it. Okay, so congratulations on being number 19. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. What does what does it feel like? Like what did you feel like when they said your numbers? Because we didn't know. So how did you feel? Well, my goal in 2020 was to be in the top 20. And wouldn't you know, the Lord did one better. Um, I was excited. I was excited. Well, in the immediate moment, I was worried about my teammate who was in top 50 and got bumped out. So I was like, <laughs> like crying with her, but it was fine. <laughs> but yes, I was very excited, super excited, stoked. Yes. I was like, because I didn't know how it was going to go. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about saying, God, I want to be top 20 and then walking like you're already top 20. Um, so I knew a strategy of how to make it happen. Um, obviously, you know, once you go ambassador, the answer is you build your 2.0 and you keep going. Don't stop. Um, um, mindset I mean <clears throat> I ultimately my mind my mind is focused on I want to go double ambassador in 2021 will it happen I'm not in control but I'm deciding I will do what it takes you know what I mean I'm choosing to go forward with it so um <clears throat> I just knew building and maintaining and building forward was going to be my best chance at top 20 you know what I'm saying? And so I just, this was the year that I felt like for the first time, I didn't burn out and disappear <laughs> after boom season. I did a much better job this year of continuing on, even when everybody else kind of fizzles out. Mm -hmm. I was like, nope. I added in TikTok. Mm. I decided to learn something new. Mm. Um, and that really kept me going, learning something new was exciting and fun and fun usually keeps me going learning something new. <clears throat> what's your biggest tiktok tip um okay 
So, you know, TikTok is like kind of like a wild card. It's like you, you can figure things out, but then you can't. And just when you think you know something, you don't. The biggest thing I can tell you is it favors genuine in your videos. It's not for the Instagram perfect, whatever, necessarily. Okay. It's not like they want to see you in your messy bun, which hallelujah for that. You know what I mean? And they want to see you at being as close to real life as possible. Um, so genuine, if you watch the playback and it doesn't seem genuinely like you don't post it because it will hurt you. It will not help you. Um, so there's that genuine thing. And then the other thing I would say is don't bend on who you are. You do not have to, if, if it's not you now, I'm not judging. This is not me judging. So please don't take it that way, but I don't say the F word. I just don't. Okay. I don't, I don't do that stuff. So in my TikToks, I'm not going to go use a sound that says the F word because that goes against who I am. That goes against me. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even if it's a popular sound and it might get me more views or it might get me responses or it might get me something, I'm not going to bend on who I am. I will not drop it like it's hot. Now, if me and y'all were hanging out and you play some fun music, sure, I will dance and sure, we'll have a good time, but it won't be on my videos. You will not record it and post it anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I could have fun anytime. It just won't be on there because I, what you put out is what you attract. Mm, yep, that's good. And I don't care who it is. I just want to attract people that are kind, that love the Lord and want to work hard. And that's all I care about. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you won't catch me posting things that are sassy, rude, cuss words. You won't catch me sipping back whatever's on TikTok. I won't bend on who I am and you shouldn't either. Now, if those are your things and that is your social media vibe, then, then that's you. But I won't bend on who I am to win at it. Yes. Not worth it. So good. Run after conference. What does that look like for you? How is that different from your other times or is it different? Run, you said run. Running. Yes. Running. running. Yeah, it does look different. Um, so obviously like your excitement energy goes up, right. But I'm also more on top of things than last month, because I know that if I get on top of things better, um, I wasn't getting up at four 30 last month. I was getting up at five 30 last month, but in boom season, my phone blows up when I wake up, it's blown up because I'm on the West coast time zone. And a lot of, most of my business is central and East coast. So my phone's already blown up when I wake up in the morning. So I have to get up earlier because now there's more people blowing me up an earlier time in the day. So I'm getting up earlier. I'm going to end up staying up later. Some of the times I try not to, cause I get up really early, but whatever. Um, I'm more on top of like I did everybody's, I don't know where the rest of them are, but I did everybody's charts and their people's charts. I'm like, I'm on top of stuff mm -hmm. in this season. Um, communicating a lot more one-on-one -on -one, cause I know that's where the win is at. Um, and, you know, there's more things that pop up because you're being creative and you're trying to get an end result different than an end result from last month necessarily. So then all of a sudden your ideas, how many Zooms we're doing might, you might add in some here and there, but we keep a pretty tight schedule. That's good. I had someone ask, what's your product regimen? Um, personally, I use the coffee every day, the keto coffee. It's my ultimate phase. Um, we use the skincare. My husband use a lot, uses a lot more uh, a variety of products than I personally do. Coffee is every day. It's a no brainer. It's every single day. Keto coffee. Um, <clears throat> um, skincare. When I wash my face, I use the old school facial cleanser. <laughs> I'm an OG. Um, what else? Uh, every single day, I would say coffee is my most consistent thing, mm -hmm. right? But like, I will make the best fat fuel as a chocolate shake. 
pretty often. I wouldn't say it's every single day, that kind of thing. I mean, coffee. Coffee is my main thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spruce it up with just a few other things. Yep. All right. So give us like, I don't know, whatever is on your heart right now for this amazing squad. What is, is something or your biggest tip or whatever just impressed on your heart? And then you know, if, you us, if you pray us out, because I know you have to get to your next call, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, so I think the biggest thing, y'all, let can I tell you a couple of aha moments? Yeah, do it. Okay. Okay. So um, we went to Texas for conference and we had a couple hundred people there. Uh, hopefully we don't get COVID, but whatever. <laughs> I'm like, eh, it's fine. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so um, a couple of aha moments. One, um, when we went to the premiere, just going to the premiere alone for me was an aha moment because I remember coming up in my business and seeing people be like go on these special trips or go to dash and go to i don't know green what's it called the dash um things like the premiere whatever and i was always thinking wow i'm nothing like those people mm. i'm like i'm i don't look like jocelyn yates and Alyssa bill you i don't have i don't have my life together like i don't look like instagram i don't look i'm like drowning in diapers and kids and I have lots of wrinkles and gray hair and I'm old frankly and like I don't know where I fit in and I feel like I'm doing everything I know to do and looking at them and going and they're like never gonna quit and they're you know killers at this I don't know how I'm ever gonna make it there you know what I'm saying and then going there and being around everybody which most of them are our friends you know in passing like through conference or events or whatever like that. And I'm like going, you know what, actually there's plenty of room for you and you don't have to be anything different than exactly the way you are right now. The difference is, and I think what happens in this process is we let our hearts and our minds get hurt mm. a little bit. Like, I'm not like this. I'm not like that. I come from here. I look like this. I do like that. I have these cards stacked against me. I, I mean, I get it 1000%. I'm hearing that, right? I I felt it too. And I think everybody does is the funny thing, you know? But the real truth is, y'all, people quit. People slow down, okay? And if you're looking at top 150 or premiere or anything, things like that, I might not be money-driven, but I am goal-driven, Okay. So if goals are fun to you and top 150 or top whatever, if you have goals set like that, the way to get those, it has nothing to do with you and your lack or what you're, you're not, what you're missing or any of those things. You want to know the trick. The trick is working in the uh, summertime when other people slow down, work in the fall when other people are quitting and you'll make it. Like it really is not like anything else other than when everybody else is taking a break or slowing down, you ramp up and you'll be in the top 150, no problem. And it, and then you'll go, man, I spent all this time beating myself up for what I wasn't and what I thought I needed to be. When the truth, the true answer was I signed 80 distributors from TikTok in the fall, in October and November. And it brought in BV and kept my paycheck up so I could go to the stinking premiere. That's all I did, but I didn't have to change who I was. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and uh, so the other thing that I would really just say, and this is what we've been saying a lot, I've been saying it in passing to people is, is just this, you really can have it all. You can have it all, but you're going to have to think above the people around you. You're going to have to go up a level in your thinking, what you think hinders you, what you think stops you, what you think separates you from where you want to be. And you're going to have to go, those things are not true. You, you have to get rid of the bull crap and focus on the truth. The truth is you're an overcomer. Yes. The truth is you are actually already highly favored. There is no more favor, more blessing. The blessing is already here. You might not be working hard enough or consistent enough 
to meet up with the blessing. The Lord's not withholding anything from you, whether you made poor decisions in life or whatever life has handed you or whatever things you feel like you've done wrong to disqualify you or whatever it is like that. The Lord's not withholding anything from you. You're already blessed. Okay. So you, you cannot keep, I let my relationship with the Lord get hurt y'all because I was getting mad at him going, you brought me here and I'm not going forward and I'm doing everything I know to do. And why aren't you blessing me? Like you're blessing other people. I'm a good person. I didn't do anything bad as a kid, really. Like, I mean, obviously I'm not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes, whatever. But my prompt, my thing is, do you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't do drugs. I didn't drink. I didn't sleep around. I didn't do any of these things that I thought qualified me for God's blessing. No, ma'am. It's not what you do or don't do that qualifies you or disqualifies you from God's blessing. No, ma'am. I... I could never be perfect enough to deserve his blessings and his grace. He gives it to me freely as a gift. I don't earn or deserve. Kelly Brown, get your life in the way you think. You are not all that in a bag of chips just because you didn't make poor decisions as a kid. But, I, but that was a real thing. Honestly, I'm like, I'm very kind to everyone. I don't care who I'm, I, you know what I'm saying? I love Jesus and I tried really hard to do a good job. And why aren't you blessing me? That's really, you know what I mean? And it hurt my heart. And he was like, I'm not withholding anything from you. You haven't decided to work hard enough to have it. I'm like, well, I'm doing everything I know to do. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let's just get real honest. I was not doing self-development. No, ma'am. Not at all. I didn't start it until my run to ambassador. Until I decided to go forward, I was like, I'm going to do everything I know to do. Anything I've never done before, I'm going to add it in because I don't know what the thing is I'm missing. I'm going to just do all the things because I don't want to be poor for the rest of my life. You know what I was, this is for real. So I added in self-development. I wasn't doing that at all. Not at all. Not even like I tried and then got inconsistent. Like I never did it ever. Not at all. So I'm doing self-development. I'm connecting to my people on a regular basis. I'm increasing my effort. And then when I've done everything I know to do, instead of going, how am I going to go to the next rank? How am I going to change my situation? The word how is not the right question. The correct question is what? What next? I did everything I know to do. I did self-development, post to post, enrolling. Da -da 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 -da. What next? Now's when the creativity comes into play. Now is when you've done your task list. I do my task list every single day. Okay, then what else are you going to do? <laughs> what next? And I get in here on my hands and knees. I open my hands and I'm like, Jesus, I don't know what else to do, but I need your creativity in a bad way. Tell me what I can do. Give me ideas. Would you bring to people? I'm giving you my business every morning, every single morning. And I need you to tell me what to do and I will do it. And then I get up and I go to work. And then I get up and I do the things and then I pivot. Each time I get done with what I know to do, now what? There's still five hours left in the day. Now what am I gonna do? What next? Now what? Now what? Go live, connect one-on-one, -on -one. do the pope, do the charts when nobody else is doing their charts. I will do them for you. It will make me money. I don't care that you're not doing it, even though you should be, you're being lazy, but it's fine. I will do them because it makes me win. That's okay. You're not building your business. Let me just go ahead and build you a double diamond business and you can have the paycheck. That's fine. But I'm going to go triple diamond over here in the meantime. And that's not going to last for you because you didn't do the work, but that's okay. Because the Lord didn't, didn't ask me to worry about what you're not doing. He asked me to worry about what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is going forward in the name of Jesus. What I'm doing is promoting. What I'm doing is growing a paycheck and changing lives. And you're either on board or you're not. You might get a paycheck in the, in the short run, but it ain't going to feel good because you didn't work for it. That's okay. That's okay. I'm still going to keep going. And I will go double ambassador, whether it takes everything from me. I, the Lord's going to grow my capacity and give me ideas. And I will find a way to make it happen. And I will work with who I am given. And if it is not my ideal people in some places, that's totally fine. Can you lift the lid off of them? And can they learn to do host to post? What can they do until the next person comes? But the Lord will bring the people if you're, if you're doing the job. If you're doing the job, all the things. And then what? And then what? 
then you're going to get what you want out of this and you can have it all, but it is going to take lifting the lid off of what you think. You can't think like the people you see on social media. You can't think like what you see on the news because you know what? The majority of that stuff is a lie and it breaks my heart, makes me sick because I don't agree. I think you can have whatever you want to. I think you can be whoever you want to. And I don't care what anybody else says. If you don't agree with me, get out of my way because I'm going forward. You, oh, you think I'm trailer park trash? You're right. That's part of my story, but it's not who I am. It's my testimony. And I will tell the world I'm a trailer park trash, whatever. Whatever you want to say, poor, broke, trailer park, trash, Kelly Brown. That's fine. But you know what else I am? I'm a winner. I'm a hustler. I'm an overcomer. And when me and Jesus lock arms, nobody can stop me. And nobody can stop you either. That's it! I just had to surge before you pray. Yes! I love y'all. Can you pray out? I know it's like time. You, you got it. You got it. Yeah, no, you're great. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Lord, for divine appointments. I prayed for them this morning. And I feel like this is a divine appointment, at least for me, to be able to connect with Rachel and with her team. Lord, thanks for tonight. Would you lift the lid off of the way we think? Would you speak to our hearts? Would you tell us the truth in every way, wherever we turn, social media, the news, people around us, whatever. Tell me the truth. I don't want to hear and think what other people tell me to think. I want to think the way you think. Higher thoughts. I want to think above, do above, live above, because that's where you call us to be. And so what do you just lift the lid off the way we think? Remind this team, Father God, they can have anything they want to, anything they are willing to go for and to trust you and to walk with you, not without you. It's not bad to have goals, but we cannot go after goals without you. Then we get off track. Would you be with them? Would you bless them? Be in their homes, keep them healthy and safe, bless their businesses, flourish them, Father God. Make this a top 20 team in the name of Jesus with plenty of top 150 income earners and let it be a testimony to the king for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.